This is interesting because it doesn't look exactly like any of the things that we've done. It's kind of not just frank and faction. There's other stuff kind of flying around. So you have some choices, okay? Um, in mathematics, there's always lots of different paths to do this. Here's option one. Are you getting the sense? Option one is, well, if this problem doesn't look like one of the ones that I already know how to deal with, well, I can just make it look like one of the ones that I do, right? So I'm not gonna, this is actually not gonna be the thing I end up doing, but if I wanted to, why this looks different is because the right-hand side is not one fraction. Do you agree? Like, if it were, then we could go to one of these and we'd be fine. So therefore, just take this guy and turn him into one fraction. It's not that complicated, right? I would have a common denominator for both of these, and then you can put fractions together. So if I wanted, if this is over 3, what would x be if it was over 3? I think it would be 3x over 3, right? Do you agree that that and x are identical. Now it doesn't seem like, why would you do that? Why would you make that more complicated? x is fine. Well the reason why is so that that can talk to this. Right? Do you see that now because they have a common denominator, I can make one fraction out of them. That's 3x take away 1 on 3. Do you see that? Right. So if I got to that point, now I have fraction on the left, fraction on the right, and then either these be fine. I guess I've cross multiplied. Okay. However, I want to pull you back to the original question and think about is there another way? One that doesn't require us to do this, okay? Remember the whole issue that we're trying to deal with is these fractions that are just kind of pesky in how to deal with them, right? So here I'm going to think about this. It doesn't look as obvious, but actually this technique, what's brilliant about it is that it's very, it's what we call versatile, right? You can use it in a whole bunch of different examples, right? So have a look. I have fractions. In fact, if you look carefully, I have exactly the same denominators that I have there as I have here, right? Do you see that? 5 and a 3. So what one number would I multiply by everything to get rid of those? And the answer is 15, just like before, right? So this is what I'm going to do. 15 out the front. I'll put the brackets there to indicate I'm multiplying the whole thing. Minus 1. Over 5. And then everything over here, I'm also going to multiply by... 15, okay? So now this calls back to expanding brackets and so on. Um, here, this is nice and simple. I can cancel, right? What am I going to get when I cancel this 5? I'll get 3, right? And that's 3, 3x plus 2. Let's expand these brackets. 15 times x is just 15x. 15 times a third is, it's a third of 15, which is 5. Don't forget that the sign comes along for the right. Um, then I just expand this guy, and I don't even really need to finish this, I don't think. I reckon you could probably get the rest of it on your own. Like, getting to this point was the hard part. Now we just want to collect like terms, and we'll get a value out for x. Okay? So I'll leave that on the board, you can have a crack at it. If you really want me to finish it off, I will. Uh, but I think you guys can get it.